Hey guys, it's Miss Arlequin, and in this lesson, we're going to be learning a new discussion technique called Socratic Seminar. So our teaching point is how do we use a Socratic Seminar to actively engage in close analysis of a text. All right, so as I said, today we're gonna to learn about a new discussion routine that is called Socratic Seminar. Now first, we need to set up some criteria for a good class discussion. So what are some good discussion habits? Some of the things that you might think of first are discussions where everybody stays on topic, where people use citations and page numbers to support their points. A good discussion will have people tracking their teammates or classmates, which basically means you're making eye contact, you're listening, you're paying attention to whose turn it is, and you are taking turns when you are speaking. What are some bad habits that we want to stay away from? Well, in general, you want to stay away from anything that's going to be considered disrespectful. So cutting classmates off, um, switching topics before the conversation is over, not participating, being rude or insulting someone's response. Anything that's going to keep us from having a classroom family where we all feel comfortable and safe. All right, so first there are a couple of procedures that we need to go through to prepare for Socratic Seminar. And these are mostly different discussion techniques that we want to use when we're engaging in Socratic Seminar. The first one is that you need to be responding to classmates, obviously. If you're not responding to your classmates, then it's not really a discussion. So one of the ways you wanna respond is to ask speakers for clarification whenever you're confused or you want more information. So if somebody makes a comment and you don't understand what they're saying, one of the great techniques would be to ask them a follow-up question, ask them to expand, to rephrase, to basically clarify. So on the screen, you have some sentence frames that could be used to kind of jumpstart your clarification comment or your clarification question. Now these sentence frames, everybody's gonna get a copy of in class. So some of the things you could say is you could say the person's name and you could say, for example, Miss A, could you please rephrase that? Or you could say the specific part of their comment that you're confused by. Like, I did not understand when you said that Alan was going to get tired of Diana in the story, The Chaser. So could you repeat that? Like, what exactly did that mean? Say it in another way. Uh, it's not clear. It's not quite clear. Can you explain what you said about the old man in the chaser? Can you say more of that? In other words, are you saying so? You can actually, in this sentence frame, you can say your own opinion of what you think they're trying to say, and then they can clarify if your rephrasement had any mistakes in it. Next, we want to keep the conversation moving. So you want to make sure that you're always listening carefully to what other people are saying. And you actually want to really like hear them and think about it. You want to process what they're saying. Um, you basically, the opposite of that would be people who are just waiting for their turn to speak. And then what you also want to do is you want to think about what everybody has said. And you want to notice those spots in the conversation where people start to just kind of repeat what's already been said or the conversation dies down. And so then when that happens, you want to change the subject when it seems like the topic has been exhausted. So you would say things like, I think we've exhausted this topic, so can we move on to this other topic? Or even just saying, moving on to question number two or moving on to this part of the story. Or if you're not sure if you're done, this third one is always a good um, sentence starter. Ask the group, does anyone have any final comments to add about, and then you say what the topic is, or the question, or shall we move on to another subject? And then if everybody agrees, you move on. Okay, next you want to make sure that you're sharing your opinion of the text. Socratic Seminar is all about making arguments, making claims, sharing opinions, and those claims and arguments and opinions need to be text-based. So you want to make sure that these are based on details in the text. If you're not sharing your opinion and you're just having a boring discussion about facts from the story, it's not gonna be a very exciting Socratic seminar. 
All right, next you want to make sure that you're asking questions. So keep the discussion going. Encourage other speakers to participate, to share their opinions through the art of questioning. So you could say, has anyone else had a similar idea or who has a different idea? This is usually very good if there are different ideas in Socratic seminar because then it can lead to some interesting conversations, maybe even debates. Asking people to comment on your opinion if they think that you're on the right track or if there are any gaps in the response, the reasoning that you're using as you look at the story. Asking people to go back into the story and give text evidence is a great questioning technique. Using the what if strategy, so taking something from the story and asking people what they think would happen. Um, what if the character was different or what if this hadn't happened and seeing the different responses people can have. So again, there's a wide variety of questionings, but this is definitely one of the more advanced Socratic seminar techniques and one of the ones that you want to make as a personal goal, especially if you're already someone who participates a lot in class discussions. All right, next, part of the fun of Socratic seminar is to be able to hear from as many different people as possible and to hear what the different perspectives are on the story. Not everybody sees characters or sees events in the same way. It's all about the you know point of view that you have, the experiences you've had in your own life, um, your personal opinions, beliefs. So don't be afraid to disagree with your classmates and let others know how you understood the story or how you view the character events or topic. You know, we all come from different backgrounds, so that's also another great part about class discussions is that you can bring your prior knowledge into the story and help others in your class kind of learn about it. All right, and then, of course, we want to add on to the ideas of others. This really shouldn't be a situation where people are just going around and reading their answers to the Socratic seminar questions or just everybody taking t turns saying what they think. You really are trying to build on each other's knowledge, build on the discussion. So you got to listen carefully to what others are saying, and you have to try to take what they've already said. And if they've already said something that you agree with or the same answer you were going to give, don't just repeat that. Try to add on to it with further evidence, maybe a different part of the story that could back up what you two both believe or elaborate, like take it the next step further. Because your classmate said that the character was angry, what further conclusion about the story can we draw from that? All right, and of course, what would ELA class be without text evidence? And so during Socratic seminar, just like every other part of ELA, we wanna always use text evidence. If we're gonna share our opinion or perspective about something from a story or article, we wanna back it up with evidence. Don't be afraid to direct your classmates to open up their books or to turn to specific pages in a text. And if you hear somebody in Socratic seminar who shares and they don't give any evidence, Call them out on it. Say, well, can you give some evidence to back up what you said? All right, so now in the beginning of our Socratic seminar, we're going to do a very traditional seminar. And a traditional seminar involves two circles. You have an inner circle. This is the actual Socratic seminar discussion. Everybody that's sitting in the inner circle. They're the ones who are participating and who are talking about a text or a specific question. The outer circle are the observers. They're listening to the discussion, they are observing, and they're evaluating. So you're actually almost being like mini Miss Arlequins or mini teachers. You're judging whether or not the students within the discussion are actually doing the right thing. Are they using accountable talk? Are they referring to the text? Are they using text evidence? And you might, during, a Socratic seminar when you're in the outer circle, you might really want to say something because nobody in that inner circle is actually saying the comment you wanna make. So we're always gonna have an empty seat. That's gonna be our hot seat. So anyone from the outer circle at any time can come and join the hot seat. They can share and say what they're dying to say, and but then they have to leave the hot seat. You can't stay there. You have to go back to the outer circle because you will have your time to be in the inner circle. When we do Socratic seminar in the traditional way with two circles, we always start with the inner circle, having the discussion first for about 10 or 15 minutes. 
and then after that time is up, we flip-flop. So the inner circle becomes the outer circle, and the outer circle becomes the inner circle. Okay, so, so far, you have the basics that you need to know for a Socratic seminar, and tomorrow we will have our first Socratic seminar, and we'll see how it goes. I hope you're excited because this is one of my favorite classroom activities.